Good morning, everyone. Just before I start, I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators on this project, Millie Kennelly and Brent Moyle from Griffith University. As we can see in this photo here, the bulging start lines of major city marathon events reflect an increasingly popular trend of everyday people participating in competitive sports events in pursuit of personal challenge and self-fulfillment. Goals such as running a marathon, completing a triathlon, or posting a CrossFit personal best represent significant personal challenges for most people, but getting there requires hard work and perseverance. Now, when an individual pursues a leisure activity that they work hard at, that they intrinsically enjoy, and that they ultimately develop a social identity geared around that activity, this reflects a concept known as serious leisure. But the catch is that any kind of serious leisure, particularly amateur sport, requires a significant resource investment by the participant. And our own research has shown that individuals only have so many resources at their disposal, so things like time, money and energy. And beyond that, those resources have to be shared between everyday obligations around family, work and domestic responsibilities on top of what is needed to pursue serious leisure. On top of that, our own research has also shown that participants' daily lives are often shaped by arranging other activities and commitments around their serious leisure activity. For example, amateur distance runners, they need to train consistently in order to compete at marathon events. They can't simply show up unprepared. So this necessitates managing day-to-day -day commitments around work and family, whilst managing to fit in early morning running sessions and recovery routines. But what is less well understood is how pursuing serious leisure impacts on what we call an athlete's non-participating entourage. So people such as their spouse, their children, their parents and their close friends. But this is a significant research oversight because of the potential social and economic consequences of when serious amateur athletes take it too far. The broad aim of this research was to explore how the pursuit of serious leisure by amateur endurance athletes impacts on their non-participating entourage. And since mid-2015, we've been conducting in-depth interviews with non-participating entourage to explore these issues, focusing on endurance sports such as distance running, triathlon and adventure racing. And this photo here is of my colleague Brent conducting field work at a triathlon event whilst I was busy competing. And there we are replete with our own non-participating entourage. So the preliminary findings show that pursuing serious leisure evokes a broad range of positive and negative impacts on athletes' entourage. On the positive side, we've found that serious leisure that is geared around sport can facilitate healthy family bonding through role modelling effects, particularly when parents act as positive role models for their children through sport. We've also found that serious leisure can provide common ground, which in enables bonding between couples and also between parents and their children. So our participants have spoken about how the athlete's sport participation takes place in a positive leisure context, which they believe have led to stronger family relationships. However, an athlete's pursuit of serious leisure can also invoke a broad range of negative impacts on their entourage. For many of the spousal partners that we interviewed, these people felt that they inevitably defaulted to a support role and picking up the slack in aspects of domestic life, such as childcare and housework, whilst the athlete partner is absent. Our data also suggests that cases where an athlete intensively pursues their sporting interests and where there is little scope for their non-participating partner to integrate into those pursuits, then that non-participating partner can begin to feel unappreciated and or neglected. And ultimately, for some interviewees, this was identified as an intense source of tension within their intimate relationships. So to conclude, although this research is very much in its infancy, several implications for policy and practice can be drawn. Firstly, there appears to be significant potential for well-managed serious leisure to enhance family relationships and to encourage intergenerational positive self-identification with living a healthy lifestyle. So the challenge for researchers is to better understand the contributing factors behind these success stories and to convert those insights into recommendations for enhanced social policy. At the same time though, this research has identified insights into poorly managed serious leisure, which may contribute towards the destabilisation of intimate relationships and possibly lead to family dissolution. And although the research fraternity is a long way from identifying an association between serious leisure and family breakdown, there is plenty of anecdotal evidence out there to suggest that these links are worth investigating. Any potential source of family dissolution deserves critical attention by the scholarly community and it's these issues that we're hoping to shed further light on through this research. Thank you.